Mass trapping is an effective method that helps to reduce pest populations in your operation. This strategy can prevent your biocontrol program from being overwhelmed, reduce the need for pesticides, and ultimately save you money. Tools that are used for mass trapping can include trap plants that are more attractive to certain pests than the crop, black lights to attract nocturnal insects, pheromone traps to lure a specific pest species, and sticky traps such as cards or tape, which catch a broad variety of flying insect pests using color as the attractant. This video will focus on mass trapping using sticky traps, as it's one of the easiest and most cost-effective methods that can be used on a variety of farms. A recent Vineland Growers survey indicated that 65% of floriculture greenhouses are already using sticky traps for mass trapping, and an even higher percentage are using it for vegetable operations. This video will demonstrate how to use sticky traps as an important pest management tool in a greenhouse. We'll also address some common misconceptions about using sticky traps in protected crops. Monitoring and mass trapping with sticky cards are often confused with one another. The difference between monitoring with sticky cards and mass trapping has to do with the size of the traps or the quantity used, as well as how frequently they're changed. Small sticky cards are usually used for monitoring. They are checked for pests and then changed, often on a weekly basis. For mass trapping, typically large sticky cards or sticky tape are used, as these have more surface area and are more economical. These traps are left up for many weeks to catch flying pests with a minimal amount of effort. Using sticky traps to catch flying insects really can decrease pressure from greenhouse pests, such as fungus gnats, shore flies, white flies, and thrips. For example, one female thrips lays an average of 100 eggs over her life. At least 50% of these will be female and also lay eggs. After one month or two generations, a single female thrips could be responsible for 2,500 more female thrips infesting the crop, if she's not caught. OMAFRA studies have shown that mass trapping can remove anywhere from 34,000 to 170,000 thrips over 12 weeks in a 10,000 square foot compartment of chrysanthemums. Similarly, each mated whitefly female caught on a sticky trap can prevent over 7,000 more whitefly females from infesting the crop after two months or two generations. Many growers worry that sticky traps, especially yellow traps, will catch and kill a large number of beneficial insects and negatively affect their biocontrol programs. Recent on-farm trials were conducted by OMAFRA to investigate these concerns. The losses of common biocontrol agents such as aphidias, aureus, and diglyphus were less than 10% on both blue and yellow mass trapping cards in a commercial greenhouse. Based on the rating scale that we use to assess the compatibility of pesticides with beneficial insects, these results indicate that sticky traps are compatible with biocontrol programs. Growers have developed many tricks that can eliminate the challenges of working with large sticky cards or long rolls of sticky tape. Use clothespins or twist ties to hang sticky cards on a line between posts, along the top of a grow bed or bench, or attached to the strings holding up vine crops. Use brackets or mounts to keep sticky tape taut. You can also use existing infrastructure like posts or columns. Cover posts in plastic wrap first before wrapping sticky tape around them to prevent the posts from becoming sticky. Staple plant tags to the tape to keep it from twisting and folding between the mounts. Use disposable gloves and clothing covers when working with sticky traps to prevent your hands and clothes from getting covered in the glue. Pure lemon or orange oil-based cleaners can be used to remove sticky residue from hands, doorknobs, and other surfaces. Now that we've debunked some of the myths about sticky traps, we will outline how best to use them. Sticky cards and tape are designed to catch flying pests and should be placed near the pest populations you're trying to catch. For thrips and whiteflies, place them no more than 6 inches, or about 15 centimeters, above the crop. Install string, wire, or brackets as an easy way to raise the sticky traps as the crop gets taller. On-farm tests by OMAFRA also showed that large sticky traps hung between posts were just as effective as those placed in the crop. Both methods caught a similar number of pests, so do what is most convenient for you. When targeting fungus gnats, shore flies, or root aphids, place sticky traps close to the growing media. The industry guideline for sticky card use in floriculture operations is 8 large sticky cards per 1,000 square feet. 
When it comes to sticky tape, in general, more is better. In vegetable greenhouses, it's ideal to place tape down each row. The number of sticky traps can be increased when pressure is high, in more heavily infested areas known as hot spots, or when dealing with outbreaks of difficult to manage flying pests. In both ornamental and vegetable crops, it's best to change the traps with each crop cycle. According to manufacturers, traps can remain sticky for more than 16 weeks. To make sure they remain as effective as possible, change them if they become heavily loaded with insects or if they get dirty. It is important that sticky traps be used consistently and set up before the pests arrive. Beginning each crop with clean traps can give you an indication of early pest pressure, and along with your regular monitoring cards, they can serve as a warning of arising pest issues. Different sticky trap colors and patterns attract different pests, and not all cards or tapes are created equal. With so many options available, how do you choose which is best for you? Large sticky cards are often used for mass trapping in floriculture crops, as they're generally easier to work with than tape. These types of traps can also be valuable in vegetable crops. However, sticky tape is often more practical for proactive mass trapping. OMAFRA greenhouse trials have demonstrated that all yellow traps are fairly similar when it comes to catching pests, but shades of blue, and their efficacy, can vary greatly. Given so many options, it's best to begin a new sticky trap program using yellow, wet glue sticky traps. If you're interested in learning more about optimizing your current mass trapping program by testing out different colors and patterns, click on the links in the video notes. There is no one-size-fits-all solution to sticky traps. Sticky tape and cards can be used in a variety of ways. Be creative and experiment with the placement of sticky traps for different pests and points of entry in your operation. If a sticky trapping method works well for you, keep doing it, but don't be afraid to try other methods. For example, sticky tape can be erected outside of a greenhouse to create a large sticky barrier and help reduce the number of flying pests entering the operation from surrounding fields. This method can be used in conjunction with pheromone lures to monitor for specific pests like pepper weevil. Additionally, scissor carts that traverse rows in vegetable greenhouses can be covered in sticky tape and used to catch flying insects such as whitefly while moving. Lastly, sticky tape can be placed at ground level or underneath watering troughs to catch fungus gnats and shoreflies, which are attracted to mold, algae, and moist organic matter. Regardless of which methods growers implement, operations that use sticky traps find themselves better able to manage pest issues. Mass trapping can play an integral part in a complete IPM program. They act as extra insurance against pest outbreaks, give your biocontrol agents a better chance of success, and reduce your overall pest management costs.